Okay, now we can start for real. So hi everyone. This is a process, the process of process. Um, so we're gonna start with the mid fight. So I've got the game loaded up and I've got the slideshow. So hopefully we can uh, answer any questions in the game if we have them. So there's gonna be two, I'm gonna break this down really simply. There's a lot of ways to play this map. This is one of the more complicated maps in the pool. And a lot of people have a lot of ideas of how to play this. So don't take what I'm saying as gospel. Let this be a framework for how to begin thinking about the game and like a lot of simplification for how to just get started so that you guys can succeed in the cup. So we're going to start with the right side mid, which uh, we like to call the immediate aggression. So kind of the convenient thing about this mid is um, there's like all this high ground and there's some high ground on the sides. So that's that's kind of the important framework to understand. So when you get to the mid, you have a lot of options. You can go right, left, straight through the middle. So this is going to be right, uh, which is generally a bit more aggressive. It allows you to take the space onto their pack side and eventually move over to their side. So I won't go super deep into all the classes. You can uh, take note. Yeah, I would say take notes, and uh, I'm not going to provide these slides after, um, unless I get permission, and then I will. So I would take notes. And I will I will provide the recording, however. So, for the right side mid, kind of the key thing to know is this low ground is one of the weakest positions. Um, one sec, let me... Um, I don't want to MP tournament restart, so I'll just hurry. I'm on a weird setup, so don't... Oh, no, my jumping's not good. Anyway, this, uh, this low ground is generally seen as one of the most vulnerable places in the mid. So the idea of this mid is to go into this place and try to get out of it. So what you're looking to do is go right, right away, and then they'll... Their team kind of has two options, essentially. They're either going to be close to you, they'll be getting the pack here, or they'll generally rotate it away. So what you're looking to do on this mid is if they're close, you want to fight them and you want to get across the line of this crate. So exactly. Never stick in the corners. It's going to be easy for soldiers to pick you off, and the demo has great sight and range here. So what you're looking to do is to kind of get into these nice positions. So you're going to start from the red arrow, basically, and you're going to look to move to eventually end up where the yellow arrow is. And oftentimes you'll end up having to make a, a play, like you'll have to fight someone to get the space. So this is a mid like predicated by the high ground. So obviously high ground is really important to take control of. Both scouts being on high ground is huge. Getting soldiers onto heights so they can shoot down with rockets and having... This is a really nice bomb for soldiers. I can show that quickly. Um, uh, oh, wrong button. Um, just doing this bomb high, you can just jump off that actually, you don't even need to do two jumps, but just jumping high and landing here is what you're looking to do on this, this soldier generally. So you can kind of look in depth, so in sixes, I suppose I, I, I should talk as if you've never played sixes before. So all six players will get to mid and Generally, the first thing that needs to happen at the mid is the demo either needs to get the pack or catch an arrow. So there's a pack on this side. If the demo goes right, he usually needs to catch an arrow. The common spot to like do that is to stand right here so that your medic can see you right as they walk through a choke. They see this, they shoot the arrow at the standing still player, they connect with their scout, and they keep walking. And the mid will progress naturally from there. 
So you're looking to all kind of walk right and then walk forward towards their choke. And if you guys win the fight, you'll usually either force them away or kill them. Or they'll have to like rotate around to try to do something else. But um, that's more complicated than I'm bargaining for with these slides. So second is the left side, which we're going to call the delayed aggression. Um, yeah, I think... I think I'm going to leave rollouts and callouts out because there's already some good content, which I can link in the chat later. Um, sorry, I didn't address that sooner. Yeah, so on this left side mid, you kind of have... It's, it's the opposite of what I was talking about before. You're going to want to play a bit more of a longer and more strategic game here where you're looking to take really good positions, assuming the opponent doesn't do too much to stop you. So kind of the key thing to focus on here is like the flank scout and roamer usually are these two. They want to get to this power position. So I can kind of quickly explain why being on this side. So uh, I'm on blue, so I'll pretend I'm on blue. Um, getting to this position is really good because you have the ability to spam like so many of the locations they want to stand and they don't have a good way to really deal with you once you're there because you have kind of one option only and it's to like bomb the soldier actually there's two bomb the soldier onto that guy or excuse me have the demo shoot him with stickies so that's kind of like what what sort of makes this mid tick the left side is this position's really powerful if you can get there undenied so back to the slides um some things that'll help this happen is the combo moving left so you've got your pocket scout you want to get right on top of rock and as medic you generally don't need to give the demo that arrow at the beginning unless he like really needs or asks for it so usually he can get the pack and it's totally fine um Excuse me. So you'll want to, like, as medic, link onto the scout, and you really want to do the opposite. You want to get across here and let your team do some stuff from up here. Um, kind of standing in this area allows you to just get mulched from across, or same thing. If you stand here and do nothing, you're susceptible to this mid. Um... Yeah, so, sorry, I was just catching up with chat. Um, the key things to focus on here are, as a combo, you want to support your players getting into the power position. So that usually looks like, as demo, like you're going to get to the mid early and you want to deny this space. You want to put stickies up here immediately and you also want to like kind of be careful of you'll have to make a read. Either the team will be going right and they'll be playing this area, or the team will be going left and they'll be playing in this valley area. So you have to make a heads up decision. You need to like, you want to protect this area for your team, but you also need to make sure that you don't get walked out down the middle or from the left side. So that's kind of your main priorities to stop those things from happening while enabling your team. Vice versa, on the soldier and scout class, you're looking to help your medic get to nice places. So a soldier, pocket soldier, it's nice to get up here. You've got a lot of good spam. You can help control these top crate areas. You have the ability to bomb like pretty far, pretty high, um, whatever you need to do. And you've got a nice, nice escape to go over onto this side because this is another nice high ground that you can keep moving with. Basically, this is more of a positional mid. It allows you to like just kind of move around, and the end game is if this team does nothing, or they go right and they're too slow, you're going to win the mid with the left side mid. So what I mean by this is if you're prepared to crush them when they're down here, so you get all set up with a soldier right here shooting down when they try to come this way, this is going to be an absolute win for you. Vice versa, if they stand on this pack and do nothing, it allows your flank to shoot down at them and get a lot of free damage and eventually kills. 
and the rest of your team can walk forward and commit off of that damage. Yeah, so that, those are kind of two basic mid plans. Does anyone have any questions on that or thoughts that you'd like me to expand on? I know there's there's some high div players in the chat, so if you guys have any thoughts too, more than happy to consider. What HUD is this? This is Void HUD. Can you show the notes again? Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, I agree. What Luigi said, you, as demo, definitely want to be communicative about the these sorts of things. If you get good damage, you want to say that. If you see where they're going and you make a read and you get damage off it, like you want to be really communicative because you've you're getting to mid first. Like you have the first dice here, and then uh, is this going to be recorded? Yes. Um, you have the eyes here, and you can kind of coordinate your team. And then in the rest of the fights, you're generally playing a bit more backline, so you don't... It's easy when you're in front to get tunnel vision, but when you're in the back, you have a lot of space to see what's unfolding, and you can kind of control the fight from there. Um, can we discuss the plan when Demo decides to go through mid? Yes, that's... Yeah, so... I'll, um, let me know if you're... Oh yeah, sorry about the stream lag. I'm not on a super good PC. Metaverse, are you good with the notes? Or just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you're all good. I'll wait like 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to move on, not to hold everyone up. So, oh, uh, round reset, eh? Oh no. Um, demo going central mid. So, this is definitely more complicated. Uh, I would say this is the more kind of meta idea now. There's a lot of ways to play this mid, obviously, as I was saying before. Um, the reason this is difficult is because as demo, it kind of reverses the rules. You're being really aggressive, and usually your team's looking to follow up on you, which is a, certainly a valid way to play. Um, generally, you have to be careful of a couple things. You have to be careful of these top crates. So if you're on the ground here, and it's easy for, or not even easy, it's default for their roamer to roll out like up here um if they notice that you're down there not denying them they can shoot you and kill you very easily so what you care about on central mid is you want to deny the crate you want to step forward and you generally want to shoot things like in front of you usually you want to do this if they're not aggressing into you very effectively and then on the other side of things, like where your team will look to play, generally it's good for both of your scouts to maintain height, usually one on rock, one on this, on uh, up here. And your team is going to play more central with the goal of eventually walking across or the ability to kind of rotate right generally. Um, so as medic, I like to play kind of right here and tank my demo as he walks forward. And you can kind of move into this space and you can either cross or walk right. Usually you'll have a scout up here to connect to. This scout, your pocket scout usually can rotate here and you can walk this way or you can connect to him and walk straight forward under. As soldiers, there's a couple of good bombs. Uh, normally, flank scout can defend the middle demo. Sometimes. It's not It's not a given. Um, you can trade. Like, What I mean is if... Um, if this soldier aggresses onto your demo, generally your demo is not going to be so healthy. Like 175 is his max HP, obviously. So like he can get two rocketed from up on these crates if they hit directs. So 
whichever, even if you trade out the soldier, like if your flanks out, you play this side, you walk across, this guy shoots your demo, you kill him. That's not an advantageous trade for your team, right? So it's often your demo's responsibility to kind of take care of himself in this situation. Because there's, if he's not being cognizant of um, like his own surroundings, you can't really make up for that generally. Um, yeah, so purely trading soldier for demo would be like a bad outcome for your team. Uh, that's probably a bit of a high level assumption, but yeah, I agree, Hubda. I think it's a little bit difficult with newer players to understand this sort of, or it's the discipline to like not move across before. That's a bit difficult to achieve. So allowing like. Allowing one team to like make this aggression is generally like goes unpunished in the lowest level. So it doesn't always work out quite the same, I feel. Um as in like higher higher divs. Um so I oftentimes one team won't really make much of an effort to do anything at all. So I, I definitely agree. So what, the one thing I didn't talk about was the soldier bombs, which are kind of a critical component to uh, just this mid in general, but not, or more of the central mid. So you've got a lot of opportunities for aggression and like to get into advantageous positions to spam. <laughs> you shouldn't go for the medic generally. Um, even on, like, Romer, generally dying for the medic early in the mid is not very advantageous, I'll say. So you've got kind of the simplest bomb is just the high bomb off this wall. You can get anywhere on the mid like this, so that's obviously good. One of the other common bombs is to walk left and bomb off this. Obviously a bit easier with uh, original than stock, um, which I'm on stock. So something to think about and then um, a common thing to do is like you sh walk up or you're up here you like shoot spam and you drop down and you get healed by your medic and then you can oops i didn't jump good um you can bomb this guy you can bomb up here or same sort of thing you can like walk back and jump on here and rotate around so you have a lot of options as soldier um, but the key thing is like soldier aggression is kind of the difficult part to teach in this, um, when to be aggressive. It's hard to coordinate as a team, I would say, especially when you're all still learning to understand your roles. So that's why the central mid is complicated because it requires a lot of coordination for everyone to be on the same page about when it's their time to bomb and commit. And versus spam, I feel. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me read what Vio said. But consider an alternate rollout for one soldier to land on the floor in front of a rock beside the wall uh, to spam the enemy rock lane crossing. Oops. Um, so you mean here? Um floor in front of your room. Yeah, so you meet here and spam across. Um, fast rollout minus the final rocket. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I should... I think many people are familiar with the fast rollout. Um, but the final part, I probably won't get this right. Yeah, I didn't get it right. But if you can hit this ramp slide correctly... Sorry, I'm on a, like, a very shitty setup compared to what I'm used to, so... Forgive me. Um, with a fake mouse. <laughs> so if you can hit that ramp slide, you can land like right here very easily. And you're there super fast, so you could get this these spam angles both, whichever side they're going. Um, my best tip to coordinate aggression is to choose a location on the mid you want to fight and give you a countdown. I, I fight fighting left in three. Yeah, exactly. I think there's a lot of, so like, it makes 
left side mid and right side mid a bit more simple in terms of there's one clear objective and you can count it down without having to communicate much about it in the heat of the moment. Um, vice versa left. So I think central mid, definitely possible if you want to go for it. And as Hubbard was saying, like if you can coordinate your aggression, that's that's the key. The 3 2 1 call is crazy powerful. Agree, agree. All right. So, can I quickly move on to. Oh, he does it this way, right? So, next, we're going to start from last. Controversial decision. Um, I'll show you guys some, some jumps while I'm moving around. Oh, I'm bad. So this mid, or sorry, this point, last, uh, you've got three situations, um, generally, but here I'll only talk about, so every situation is defined by what the state of the Uber is. So either they have Uber or they don't, and you have Uber or you don't, and then someone has more Uber than the other person. Or one team has more Uber than the other, obviously. So if the team instantly wins mid uh, against you, you're going to be on last, probably with full disad. Their medic will have Uber, so you're in a desperate hold, as it says here. So I like this strategy best. It allows a lot of flexibility while... Mm. Nobody gets to walk in for free against you, generally speaking. So, um, you've got the five doors. So, one is down here, two, this is for everyone who's not familiar, one, two, three, four, and five. So, you've got your roamer on this side, watching this five door, and sort of the four door, um, what you can't see, probably. Oh, is this box here? Standing behind this and being able to, or standing on top of it, but, excuse me, being able to drop down off of it and jump away is important because although you're trying to spot these Ubers, you also don't want to get killed by them. So. Yeah, you can uh, jump away if you're a little better than I am right now. Um, and same with here as well. You can kind of drop off this ledge and jump away. And demo here. So like every player is like figuring out how they can jump away to later recommit to the point. So the soldier's job late in this push is to try to deny uh, this last point. So where you see these yellow lines these are good positions to move away, and then you'll look to like wait and then rebomb the point. So, on the demo side of the things, you're usually going to be watching an aggressive trap that will get the force if a team tries to go through one of these two doors. But you need to play for far enough away that you're able to kite either through spawn or up through heaven. Um, meanwhile, your combo, so your medic and flank scout, will generally be here on top of um, here in this upper area. There's one nice thing that you should know. It's you have this sight line. So that's why in this, you see the pocket scout playing here. It's because you can see all the way deep to back here. And you have your medic playing close <laughs> to here. And you, as you see this coming, if they are coming the right side, you run left. If they're coming left side, you stay right. That's it. <laughs> Usually a flank scout will have a gun. Sometimes they'll... Uh, I won't talk too much about off-classing, but uh, sniper and heavy are... Or sorry. If you're in a desperate hold, so you might not have time to set up a gun. If you do, you should. Um, if not, I would recommend playing Sniper and then switching to Heavy after. How do I kill Shiny guys? You cannot. It's impossible. Um, 
wait for them, or how to say, headshot them before they become shiny. That's what I recommend. Um, and then, usually if you have the gun, you'll want to switch to scout after. If they get the gun, it usually means they're already in quite deep. Usually heavy's a little too slow to get from spawn uh, out to the point. So that's why in this diagram, it's NG to scout. So... Um, yeah, so I won't stay on anything too long. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, so I won't dwell on stuff too long, and you can review this, hopefully. Um, so, in an even hold, um, this is what a lot of people refer to as the quote-unquote invite hold. I would just call it like a central hold. There's some old styles of playing where people hold close on this right side, um, but this, just for sake of simplicity, there's a lot of ways to play this. Um, this is what I would say is pretty simple. So you've got your medic playing central behind this wall, protected by a level 3 sentry gun. Uh, you've got your pocket soldier up here getting tanked by your medic, your roamer watching this, protecting your sniper, um, which is usually your pocket scout. And you've got your demo watching a trap. Usually it's on top of stairs, or sorry, I should show exactly usually a trap right here super good any traps here above that door above this door these are really effective because oftentimes when it's even like described it means the other team wants to sack wants to sack one or two into you so having these early traps set up so that they can't just walk into a door it's just a free kill so um oh right 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 this is just one soldier, sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Um, this is just Roamer, and he can rotate between these two. I totally forgot that's how I did this. Um, yeah, so protecting the sniper versus just watching this upper area. You have a lot of room to move around. Um, so you can play a little aggressive and spam if you're trying to like countersack, for example, or you're the one countersacking. Um, and yeah, as pocket... Um, you can play right on this angle to see both doors and shoot both doors in a super simple. Um, you generally do, if they get too close to you, you have this wall to shoot. Because like if they play right here, they can kind of shoot you without any recourse. But you've got to be clever about your like angles. Because you can splash a lot of places in this room, but you have to be clever. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, as medic, you're a bit scared of spy. I would say that's the most vulnerable thing here. Um, and then pushing out, I'll quickly touch on, um, if you want to, so say you have full add, um, generally you have two options. You come out of lower or you come out of shutter and one. So, is spy viable in comp? Probably not full-time, but definitely in general. I think more than people like to admit he's viable. Um, usually, you use out of lobby. So there's oftentimes going to be a trap above this door. Um, what you usually want to do is bomb your demo from right here uh, all the way to their choke. So obviously, I can't do a too sticky jump. But you land right here. You try to catch their combo. And with your pocket scout and med, you try to catch up to him. Uh, with the rest of your classes, usually you post up like a pocket here and your roamer here, and your flank scout can kind of want to run out through. Um, or actually, your pocket soldier can go one as well, um, and your flank scout just wants to kind of get to point and start the cap immediately and get to the high ground. Um, on this shutter push, usually you want to avoid using the Uber, so. Walking through here for free, you want to clear any... Now it's not possible anymore, but there used to be a lot of wall bug spots that people could hide. Um, but you want to clear your high bombs, clear the height, clear these spots, and then just walk up, take the height, and hopefully the threat of you walking through this door uncontested, um, they don't want you to use the uber into them, so they're going to walk away. Sometimes they'll sack one or two, and that's what you have to be cared of, or, uh, scared of. Um, 
How do I not get back half doing these pushes out of less? It's not impossible, but obviously you have to like take risks in order to like make advances. So that's, I think one of the most common ways to lose is it's easy as soldier to just jam up this whole area. And I think people underestimate the power that like just a passive soldier in these doors can have. Um, so like you can lock down one area of soldier really easily. And same here, you have a lot of flexibility, whether you're one or two as pocket, um, just clearing these doors and like moving around, looking for any back cappers. And it also, you know, your team doesn't need you to be aggressive. Like your demo and scout are going to do enough of the damage in the Uber so that you can turn around and deal with any threats behind. Um, Generally, flank scout can be difficult, tricky. You've got to be attentive, especially at the higher levels. Like, where are all the guys? Can I spot everyone? Is there anyone going behind? So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, HUDs, yes, preference. I chose mine because it looks pretty clean, and I like how the numbers are close to my crosshair, and they're big. And, yeah, it's just pretty clean. Um... Uh, I think that is everything. Uh, you said especially with not great team coordination. It's just understanding that certain individuals, certain classes can like jam up these doors more than others. So that's what I would recommend. It's just parking people in good positions. Yeah, um, I think huds.tf is a thing. You might want to check that out if you're looking for a HUD. Okay, so I'm going to move on a second. Um, hopefully we don't have to take too long uh, on all of this. Um, you're going to have a really default setup here. Um, usually as medic, you like to play in this area. Um, you got your two flank classes in IT, got your demo on the ground holding choke, and you've got a soldier kind of playing, um, roaming between these two areas. So this is pretty common hold. They're just going to be trying to sack into you. Um, one common mistake is... Uh, not getting, um, or, sorry, the common mistake is getting a little bit too eager about when people go into uh, into sewer, sorry. So, sewer is a tempting place to go as pocket soldier, but oftentimes it's just a bit of a trap and you can get caught feeding there. And if you go down to five, it's not going to be very pleasant for you. So, you really want to just kind of hold these nice positions, hold these, um, Round reset again, of course. Um, you've got these super nice high grounds here that are really hard to break. They've got to cross like, a lot of low grounds if they ever want to get to you on high ground. So it's just good to occupy these spaces. And you've got so many positions, especially as soldier, um, that you can just take high ground and spam down there. Um, yeah, so that's even, um, when you're going to counter sack, there's not too much nuance to it. You've got three doors to do it, um, sewer choke and IT, um, in terms of pushing into mid, I'll quickly talk, um, oh, obviously you want to play passive if you're down and decide, usually you play to leave shutter, um, or one as medic and the rest of your team plays like high ground and looks to spam as they come in and then leave. Uh, not super complicated. Then for pushing, you've got the three options, the three doors. Generally, sewer and choke you don't want to use, but uh, IT you do want to use. And it's the same principle. You've got this trap that's so common here and um, this door is just impossible for your combo to get through without using generally. Um, Yes, this will all be on the test. No, but you'll have to know some of this, or you'll want to know some of this for when you play in the cup. Um, yes, there. well, there is going to be a test. You do have to play against other people. So knowing, you know, the strategies is going to help you uh, as a team. So the mid-even hold uh, is pretty straightforward. You've got your demo watching choke. 
uh, your pocket is going to be in charge of sewer generally, uh, and also sometimes choke. And as a roamer, you're going to be watching IT like this. So there's not what you need to know about this is like not so much the positioning, but how to do the sacrifices. So if you get into a position where you're stuck here, your opponent, you're both even. Uh, excuse me, what you're going to need to know is the bomb that I did before. This is one of the... I didn't do it good. But this is one of the best bombs that you can do. Um, obviously, it's a bit limiting because it's a three rocket jump. Um, you're only going to be able to reload two rockets before you get in. So it's kind of high risk, high reward, but it's pretty hard to stop if um, their scouts aren't that good at shooting you. So that's one. Another thing that you can do is go from sewer. You can jump off this, jump off this, and get on the medic, hopefully. So those are how you're going to ease most easily break the stalemates, um, is sacking soldiers like those. But eventually, they're going to get wise to your uh, to what you're doing, and there's like a lot of ways, there's a lot of counterplay for these sacks, but I just want to get you started. So, um, with every sack, there's obviously something they can do about it. So, I'll talk about the Al Qaeda sack um, from here. So, if, you, if you're playing Pocket Scout and you stand up here and this soldier tries to jump right past you, it's not going to happen. Like, you can shoot him once at any time and it just stops it. So, there's a lot of counterplay with sacking that makes the game pretty interesting. Um, hopefully I'm not going too fast. Please let me know if this uh, doesn't make sense at all or like need more info. But this should be a good framework, I think. Um, let me quickly take a peek at this shed. Or this slide. Oh, I'm definitely type or uh, talking fast. I would say like try to keep notes of your classes, and then uh, you can refer to this video for your team if uh, that's necessary. So I, I definitely am going fast just to save a bit of time since this is going to be recorded. If if it was. If this was like a true class, I would go slower. Um, so holding their second. So assuming... Oh, right. So now we've got to talk... Before we talk about that, we've got to talk about pushing from mid into second. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Well, refer them to this video. It'll be more helpful than trying to take notes and explain. Um, I'll post a link in the chat, and it'll be on my YouTube most likely, or if it's good enough, uh, TF2CC or RGL, perhaps. Um, so pushing, you've got the same three doors. I would recommend um, trying to go from here for free. So trying to walk out this door, Al-Qaeda, and... Um, walk up to their high ground. So usually you want to not use this Uber, but if they're close, you can use it and walk into them. I would say this is just the safest and kind of most standard way to do things. So it's worth practicing this this push a lot more than the others. Um, the kind of disadvantages of pushing in from this choke is like you walk into a low ground and you're really far away. Like they have a lot of spam on you. So generally it's not a great idea to do this. And, oops, poor jump, but uh, pushing IT is generally impossible to, um, if they have a competent soldier, they'll shoot you all the way as you're running, and then they'll run away. I think it might be beneficial for them to learn why they should be doing these plays that you're describing, like the sacks and the pushes, if you want to go into it. That's a great point. So... I think the key things here are 
So if you're thinking about a soldier sack, your goal is to force or kill the medic, right? So on the other side of things, they're prepared. They're all set up to try to stop you from doing that. So what they're doing is they're going to take high ground, and the two guys who that who you care about are going to be the scouts because they can shoot you. Obviously, the projectile classes can airshot you, but it's it's much rarer for sure. Especially, I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, but you've got a scout that's set up defensively to try to deny your bomb. So what you have to do to circumvent that, it's like scout is kind of a hard counter here. Um, you want to have speed and height. Generally, if you can have both, it's a good bomb. Um, if you can have one, it's usually okay. So that's why I recommended this bomb from here, because despite the one rocket, you're coming in with so much speed and so much height that it's really difficult for them to shoot you out of the air. And you have a lot of time to kind of survey the scene. And obviously when you're shooting down a soldier, it's much easier to splash the ground. So just intrinsically being above them is going to be helpful. So it's the same with this Al-Qaeda bomb too, but it's a bit less so because... Um, you're bombing a bit lower. You're exchanging like uh, the height for the speed. So like you can bomb high, but you're overshooting it, like I just did, and you're kind of missing the mark. So there's a lot of things to think about when doing this. Um, I'll just quickly show another bomb that's common. I'd say either from here off of this wall, and you can bomb deep and try to go behind or something. Um, or uh, you can just walk um, from choke, like I just did there. Yeah, exactly. So that's the other thing, too, is you have to consider the vision the opponents have on you. So this, this applies in all aspects of the game. Um, but when the opponent sees you, they can react to what you're doing. If they don't see you, uh, they can't react to it. It's It's as simple as that. So... Coming out of a place where you're unspotted super fast at a random time is like the recipe for success in a force, assuming you can hit the rockets. And yeah, vice versa, like you have a lot of time to react to this Al Qaeda bomb or this choke guy somewhat, but you generally have a demo watching this choke. Um, as that's a great question, actually. So, as demo. Your number one priority is always going to be denying areas. So no matter what the situation is, you're going to want to look forward and look at places that the enemy team wants to go. So all things being equal, if you're demo and you're, I don't know, you like back up and you start shooting pipes at this guy who's bombing, it means you're not kind of doing your job. So they can just stroll right through this choke and start shooting you, which you don't want that to happen, obviously. But there's a lot of situations similar to this where, you know, you can take a mid-fight, for example, where you have to be a bit proactive about where are the guys going to want to stand or want to walk through and stop them from doing that. So it's like what I was talking about before when you're playing this... Um, let me turn off. No clip. Um, when you're playing this like left side mid, making this read is really important, like what I talked about, trying to deny these uh, these avenues. And yeah, what um, what Manicute is saying is correct, obviously. It's um, really good to have defensive traps to kill bombers or sackers, like no matter what. If you can get a free pick with a trap, that's great. Exactly, exactly. Ignoring... Ignoring useless information is, is a huge skill in TF2. There's all, like six things are happening all at once from the enemies. Being selective about what you care about, ultimately you're cutting down the information overload, but also just knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at is important. Yeah. Good questions. I, I really appreciate it. And good answers in the chat. I, I really am enjoying this. Okay. So now we're going to talk about second into last, which is 
honestly probably one of the more contentious ones um generally speaking so what i'm going to recommend here is perhaps non-traditional but i think a bit simple so what i'd like to do is have my flank scout stand up here and watch uh one and two have my pocket soldier rotate between two and three this is going to be the hardest job i'll say uh i'll get to this in a bit um so it's an even situation so you're generally looking to sack so excuse me what needs to happen here is before you do any of this before you get into lobby um excuse me jeez um you're gonna want to buff your soldier who's gonna sack i mean that's just universally true but I see this as a common mistake, like, you wait until you get to this position to get buffed. No, you want to do the opposite. Get buffed before, and then everyone moves to this position. Once you're set up, then, you know, if the soldier has gone down from 300 to 250, you just continue to buff him, and then he can go. Um, yeah, so the key thing here is Demo is going to lock down these uh, three, four doors. This guy's going to sack through, so... You have to be a little bit afraid of someone uh, coming through right after, but you've got this scout. So, this is a, a lot of moving pieces, I'll say. So, yeah, exactly what Jay is saying in chat. Um, there's a lot of ways that this can go wrong for you, right? They could have Sniper. They could have Demo Man shooting stickies. They could bomb into you. So you're just looking to like be aware of what they can do. And a lot of times you will get surprised when you're just starting. Um, because there's a lot of ways that a team can exploit your position. It's, it's a very complicated strategic game. Um, I'll quickly show... So sort of the soldier bomb here is going to be to walk through here. And to... I don't know why I didn't hit that. Um... I'll cheat a bit. I'll jump from here. You can ramp slide all the way up into heaven. And this is usually where they're going to be set up. So this is exactly how you want to sack. You get in super deep. You're going fast. You can't really go high because of the ceilings. So like you're taking what you can get. And you're going to try to get on the medic here. So the rest of your team... It's looking to make that happen while also not fumbling the uber. So demo is going to be taking care of this area. Um, pocket soldier is going to look at this door generally, but sometimes you'll be needed to rotate over here. So what is the counterplay to this? So obviously you're going to sack a guy, so eventually they can counter sack. But if a team knows that you like to do this, they're going to try to kind of crunch you and lobby. Whether they have a demo, they could have a sniper set up like from this angle or from uh this angle here they could have a sniper all the way on the five side right here you can see into lobby and into five um i'll just go sniper to quickly show um so they have a lot of counterplay and it, it's a lot about being smart especially as um so yeah, this gets into what Airborne is saying about who should be spotting. Um, I'll try to circle back uh, to what you're talking about, Metaverse, after I finish this thought. Um, so, generally the best person to do anything about what's happening in Lobby is uh, a Soldier. Because Soldier has the most HP when buffed. So, a 300 HP Soldier can tank a sniper shot if it's just a quick scope. So looking into lobby like this, just standing on the stairs, you can kind of see everything. You won't get to see a gun necessarily. Um, sometimes that'll be take more effort. Um, but that's so vision isn't the only thing you have in the game, right? You also have your ears. So. If you don't hear that there's like a, a, an NG close by, or you don't hear the sentry right here, you can kind of assume it's not there. Obviously, the environment can be a little loud, um, but you can listen around, and usually they'll have a gun here, or on point, or down here. And there's not that many exceptions to that. 
perhaps in this cup teams will put it all over the place who knows but you have kind of a limited range of options and you can use your eyes and ears to sort of deduce soldier is the best guy to do pure peeking scout can obviously peek quickly you know just like walking around corners to like look for stuff um but i would say if you need information it's going to be the pocket soldier is usually the best um sniper you're gonna have to look for the dot and sometimes they're they're clever i mean um sometimes you're just gonna lose the sniper it really sucks to say but sniper is pretty broken that's the whole thought so uh sometimes they're just gonna charge their shot up here and then they're gonna hit a headshot on you as you walk across that being said like again soldier has the least or like has the most HP to potentially deal with that. So, yeah, the class is locked to one normally, not in my current config, but in the comp config, most classes are limited to one because there's a lot of broken classes, I suppose. So, hopefully, that gives kind of a framework. So, that's kind of why you want to set up like this. They have a lot of options to kind of crunch you, but this kind of helps you deal with them. So as soon as you sack this guy, you just get out of lobby. Uh, successful or not, you're going to want to wait for this guy to respawn. So you've got time. You can clear out. Take this height. And yeah, I guess... Uh, so he's, he's got all the leaving after, right? Um, I won't go too much into these because I think they're a bit unnecessary. Um, but I think you'll see a lot of the common trends exist on um, in this. So this second has this trapezoid area that's like a really nice high ground. Whether you're leaving this way or leaving this way, it's nice to be able to spam people as they're coming into these doors. And you have this convenient wall to do a fast bomb away in whatever direction you need. Uh, when making callouts, how do I make sure my callouts are as valuable to my team as possible? I think there's the short answer is try to say as much with as few words as possible. But the long answer is if you think more about what do the other people need to hear um, that's going to help you be a, com a good communicator in TF2 is like, you know, when you're taking lobby, for example, like in the, um, this situation, being that soldier who's proactive, like they could have a sniper, they could have a gun. I'm going to look for those and I'm going to say if I see them and then just being like gun right spawn, being very concise about your call. That's, those are going to make you an effective communicator in TF2. Generally, saying things once is better than saying it two or three times, too. So breaking those bad habits early is actually really good, because I've been on teams before where the comms are just miserably loud. Uh, that reminds me, RGL doesn't have a No Restrictions League. I can't answer that at this time. Um, have you ever lied to your teammates? I definitely have. I wouldn't recommend lying. Um, yeah, I think... Sometimes you need to get something to happen if you see something that they don't. Sometimes you have to stretch the truth in a simple situation. Or, like, if you say, you know, I did 100 to, to something and you did 60 or 80, that's not, you're, like, stretching the truth a bit. But if you also see that they're, like, out of position and you need your team to collapse, like, um, that's what you need to know. I'll, uh, Mass Mayhem... I'll uh, link a video uh, with all the callouts, um, but there's one on the RGL website, and another resource is um, mapreview.tf. Oh, I typed it in caps, but anyway. Oops. Uh, that has a lot of good resources in video form, but definitely check out um, the RGL videos are really nice because uh, they're animated and they've got... Um, words it's really easy to make the association so you've got the ways to leave but again it's all very similar like you set up traps you have your soldiers play height and they jump away 
I think learning to kind of make this up on your own is like a key to having some success with this. So all that being said, that's pretty much all I have to offer. It has been about an hour, so uh, I'm happy to just do some Q&A now, so. <laughs> Beer clock. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate so many people being here for so long, especially across the range of experiences. Yeah, I should be back at you with another one of these for another map. I think um, clear cut later this week. Several people are typing. How can I get the slides you're using? I'll ask my friend if I can uh, if I can share them, and hopefully it's okay. Uh, otherwise, I'll release this video later, or I'll release the video either way. But yep, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna cut the recording off now.